much for the introduction. Um, what we talk about today about, can we, can, ah, okay, excellent. Um, we talk about investing in crypto. So short question, how many of you are invested in crypto? Hands up. Okay, um, quite, quite a reasonable number. So probably um, you have went all through the same problem. Yeah? So the same experience that um, investing in crypto can be quite, quite a roller coaster ride. Um, and today I will discuss um, what are the possibilities to manage that and how to reduce, let's say, the pain that you have when investing in crypto. Uh, of course, uh, this is just for educational purposes, so no investment advice given, and uh, please consult your investment manager before you put any money into uh, this. Just a little bit of background uh, about us. Uh, so I'm co-founder um, of Adaptive, former Openmetric Solutions. We are a spin-off from ETH Zurich, um, founded in 2016, uh, based on research technology which has been developed approximately over a period of, of 10 to 11 years at ETH where the focus was on developing uh, a new approach, an innovative approach, how to measure risk in financial markets. And I will have a very short explanation to that, how it works. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot go too much into depth. Um, what we're doing since 2016 is we have several clients, like Publica, for example, the largest pension fund in Switzerland, and uh, they use, for example, our technology uh, as input for their, for their risk models. Um, now, why is it so painful and why is it important to, to manage risks and manage especially drawdowns? I mean, uh, risk is, is sometimes a little bit an abstract, an abstract beast. Yeah? I mean, some people talk about volatility, some people uh, talk about turbulences. Uh, you have many names for it, um, but at the end, what is of utmost importance, and this is, I cannot repeat it often enough, is capital protection. Yeah? So at the end, what, what hurts most is what people do not understand is the asymmetry between losses and returns. When you see this curve here, uh, which shows then on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis, it shows loss, and on the vertical axis, the required recovery. And very intuitively, I mean, if you lose 50%, you need 100% performance to just recover. So if you have $1, you lose 50 cents, you need 100% based on the 50 cents which are left just to recover. And it gets worse. And you see that this curve uh, grows faster than linear, which means that, for example, with 80% losses, and it's not a coincidence that I choose 80%, you will see in a, in a minute why, is you need 400% performance just, just to recover. The problem is that every market has some limits. Yeah? So there is no, let's say, unlimited growth in any market, even in, in, in crypto, which means that you need time. So it's not only destructing, the destruction of capital, which is a problem. You're losing capital when you may need it. Um, the asymmetry is a problem. So you need time. And it can take years to recover. And typically, it takes not only in the equity markets, but in crypto also. You have know, seen that from drawdowns over drawdowns. And this is basically. Um, a sample uh, about two things. It's a little bit an involved slide, so we'll take uh, uh, let's say a little bit of time to discuss it because I think this is the basis for understanding the rest. So when you see in the in the top chart, you see two graphs. Um, one is a blue; it's uh, Bitcoin, and the green one is basically nothing else than a basket. It's a basket of of ten tokens. There is uh, some weighting logic behind it, so it's not pure market cap. If you, know, you know that if you take pure market cap, your portfolio is extremely concentrated in crypto, you would have basically only Bitcoin and Ether. So it's a little bit more, as we call it, smart weights, uh, um, smart capital weights, and basically it's a technology we developed at Adaptive to ensure that you always have a good compromise between market cap and, um, let's say, sufficient contribution of the of the part of, of your of your portfolio, what you see here then in a, in green is the annualized return. You see that the basket even outperforms um, uh, uh, Bitcoin. You can see the green line is above the blue one. Um, but what is even more important, uh, you're getting a better shop ratio. So your risk compensation, and this is what many people forget, you have always to look at a combination between return and volatility, and and. This ratio is important because it gives you an indication if you are well compensated or not. So if the ratio is below one, typically you're not that much compensated or not well compensated. If the, if the ratio is above one, in this case it's 1.2, uh, it's, it's uh, much better. But, and this is a big problem, you see the red frame, um, the drawdowns are still 
phenomena. Yeah, so 80% drawdown is what I said. You need 400% recovery. So per se, it's a bad investment. Of course, you can say, yeah, well, I invest less, so I just invest, let's say, 10% into crypto. All fine, and we know this results, and we have presented these results in the past. But the problem is that you, within this bucket, you are still living with these losses. Yeah? So how can you manage that? Now, the, this is basically what we're trying to give an answer. So how can you, let's say, survive these crypto winters, yeah? So where you're losing a significant amount of your money, it doesn't, I mean, you, even if you invest only one or two or three percent of your, uh, of, of your wealth, but imagine you are running a fund with 100 million um, and you have invested, let's say, four to five million in crypto and lost just half of it. I mean, it's a lot of money. Yeah? So, in, so in, in relative and absolute terms. So how does it work? Um, the approach, and this is, we have a very, let's say, a, a very strict engineering approach. So what does an engineer uh, is doing when he cannot predict the future? Assuming, and this is our core belief, that you cannot predict financial markets. There are several reasons for that. We don't have time for that today, but we just assume that we cannot predict financial markets. So what you do is you, you develop a sensor. So it's what we did. We have a market sensor which detects changes in the market. And the main logic, and this is just a very, very brief, uh, let's say, description how it works. What you have here, and we go really, let's say, from top down, yeah? So you see here a, a data series, you see the, the, the blue bars, yeah? These are returns. And you see left, you have uh, what we in the industry call risk on regime. So you take risk as an investor. Why? Because you have a favorable environment, yeah? You have a, a positive trend, positive returns, relatively low volatility. And then you have a transition phase, this is, it's very typical in financial markets that you have transition phases between regimes, and now you are in a risk-off regime, which means that you are getting off the risky assets. And the question is, okay, um, how can I possibly know when I, when I have to move from one regime to the other? And this is where basically our methodology, our math comes in, which is called Bayesian change point analysis, which is a methodology which detects regime changes. So it's a, probability that we're getting, which is this orange bars. So you see that just with a handful, so just very small number of new returns, we're just looking at the returns of this asset class, you're getting information that something is happening here, that we have a different market dynamic. If you combine this with the trend and the risk, then you are getting this um, stability sensor. This is the uh, traffic light logic, yeah, from green to red. So, which means green is a favorable environment. You can be fully invested, and red is a rather um, not so favorable environment. You should be deinvested. And what you see, this uh, yellow lines here. The yellow lines are the traditional approaches. Traditional approaches uh, need many more data points to react, which means that they need more time before they react. It's, it's like a sensor logic. Typically, imagine you have a wind sensor which uh, controls the blinds of your house. You want to have a sensor which is fast enough when a storm is coming, but it's not always reacting to every, let's say, small breeze, but it should be, again, fast enough to, to protect um, the house. Now, how is this transferred into a portfolio? So this is a little bit more the practical uh, use of it. You see here, it's basically the spent with um, allocation from red, which means zero, which is completely disinvested or completely hedged, completely protected to one fully invested, so zero hedge. This allows you to control your risk. This allows you to control your hedging costs. So you're not just hedging flat. You're not hedging just whatever you want, 30%, 50%. You know exactly when you have to protect your portfolio to which extent. And this is over time. So you see now across 10 cryptos over time. And what is important here to see that you see these regimes. If you look from, from left to right, just take the top line here, which is, I have my glasses off, it's Bitcoin. Um, so you see that you have phases where it's positive, we have a positive environment, then you have a transition phase, and then you see uh, a red environment where you should not be invested, which is relatively recent. I mean, the last uh, information piece here is two weeks old. And we, you see that during a crisis, uh, for example, almost all instruments in the same asset class, the whole crypto universe goes south. Yeah? So 
you, you, it does not protect you. So just diversifying across different uh, cryptos doesn't protect you, as we have seen in the first chart. And now you see that we have a certain recovery, but the recovery is still not very stable. So you see it's, it's still deeply in orange, it's still intermittent. So it's basically, even though we have some positive trends in the market, which you may think, okay, market has, is recovering. Yes, it's, it's recovering, but it's not, uh, let's say, clear that it has already moved into, into the green zone. Okay, how do you do this on, a, on really constructing a portfolio? You need then to, to, to apply this risk logic on each and every instrument. You have seen this before in this, this matrix. This is here a longer period. We take here then, um, so let's say, several years. Uh, what is available on data, of course. I mean, some cryptos are, uh, let's say, longer there, like, uh, let's say, Bitcoin. Others uh, are not as long existence. And then you're getting this result. And um, looking at that, what you see here, the green line and the blue line again. So blue line is uh, Bitcoin, and the green line now has much better uh, risk parameters. So it's, it's even a higher sharp ratio, and the drawdowns are massively reduced. Now you may say, well, okay, it's um, nothing, I mean, between 80 and 50% drawdown. Yes, it is. I mean, instead of losing, of recovery of 400%, you just need 100%, which is still a lot, but in the crypto universe, it's not that far away from reality. And also, you're even improving your returns. So your sharp ratio is even getting better. You can have low volatility. So basically, this is a very typical outcome of, of applying a risk management logic to crypto. And uh, there are many methodologies which have been tried, not so many function. Um, we have tested this now, it's Battlefield tested now for several years, since 2019 we are doing research on that topic. Um, so we are quite convinced that it works and we can show that it works. So why is it valuable? You protect your capital, um, you can improve your, your uh, performance of your portfolio because in these phases where you are not invested, you have free cash. So you can allocate this cash into other instruments. Um, the re recovery times are shorter, and typically you are getting even a higher uh, sharp, uh, risk compensation, a higher sharp ratio. Um, so overall, it's a very beneficial approach, um, and this is why we propose to work with that. Um, to finalize, um, how can it be consumed? So, um, so how do we, we offer that to our clients? One is a traditional overlay logic. So a client has a, a portfolio or an index, and we basically deliver the hatching overlay. Um, it's like pension funds do it, or index issuers, uh, or maybe even uh, product issuers do it. Um, you can have a white label solution. This is what we do. So we, we offer uh, custom development uh, for investment solutions, not only crypto, but of course also crypto. And we will launch uh, in the next uh, two or three months our own product, which will then be uh, exchange listed ETP, listed on SIX and uh, et cetera. Um, and this is again coming soon in the next months. Yeah, that's uh, all. Thank you very much. And I think maybe we have, I don't know if we have time for uh, still some questions. Yes, in, first off, give it up for Felix Fernandez.